So today the Supreme Court handed down yet another atrocious decision. Now, since 1976, this court has been passing decisions saying that money is speech in Buckley v. Vallejo, and then in 78, in the Bellotti decision, they said corporations are human beings and hence have First Amendment rights and hence can spend money in politics. And then came the long, great decline of our democracy. Now, in Citizens United in 2010, they basically ended our democracy. They said that outside groups can spend unlimited amount of money in our election cycles as long as it was independent expenditures. Now, in reality, of course, as we saw it play out in 2012, a guy like Sheldon Adelson came in and said, yeah, 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 I'm independent of Newt Gingrich, but I'm going to give him $15 million, $25 million. He eventually wound up spending $40 million at a bare minimum in the 2012 elections and saying and running ads for Newt Gingrich and then later for Mitt Romney those expenditures were not in any way independent they were against Barack Obama they were against the Democrats it was Adelson trying to buy the elections in that rare case they were not successful but in smaller elections they're almost always successful because they drown out the other candidate it's harder to drown out the voice of the president but when you get to senators from Wyoming, very easy, small states, hard to spend a lot of money, let alone all the congressional districts all across the country. Now, already our democracy had died at the national level, yet the press goes on talking about who's the most successful candidate based on how much they raised in legalized bribes, as if that's a good thing. That's actually a hideous thing, an atrocious thing. But today, the Supreme Court dragged that old dead horse and shot it several more times. There's a case called McCutcheon versus Federal Election Commission, and in it, they decided to raise even more of the caps, saying almost no caps left in your ability to donate and hence buy our politicians, our so-called representatives. First, let me explain what happened here. Uh, Supreme Court, as the Associated Press says, struck down limits Wednesday in federal law on the overall campaign contributions. The biggest individual donors may make to candidates, political parties, and political action committees. So how does this play out? What were the old rules, what, were the, what are the new rules? Well, in the old rules, in a federal election cycle, you could only give a total of $123,200 directly to campaigns and to political parties, okay? So now, that's a ton of money anyway, but many people, including Mr. McCutcheon, who's of course a Republican activist, wanted to give far more than that. So that was the old rule. Now, you could uh, contribute to candidates in total, when you uh, sum up all the candidates you gave money to, for a total of $48,600. And individually, to one particular candidate, the maximum you give was $2,600. Well, today in the McCutcheon case, uh, the Supreme Court wiped out the first two limitations. So there is no maximum that you can give in a federal election cycle now. Uh, the contribution to candidates, there is no maximum. The only thing that remains is you can only give $2,600 per candidate. Now, let me begin to explain to you why this is so devastating. So now, a guy like Sheldon Adelson or the Koch brothers, or theoretically someone on the left like George Soros, or theoretically someone uh, it's an independent like Bloomberg but cares a lot about gun control, for example, can come in and pretty much a, buy, and B, threaten the political parties this way. They can say, hey, you know what? I'm going to give the maximum of $2,600 to every national candidate in the country. You do as I tell you, otherwise I will take that away. Uh, they can go to the Democrats. Here, I'll give you another example. Let's use a corporate example, ExxonMobil. Now, overall, the oil companies get anywhere from four to $14 billion in taxpayer money every single year, in subsidies. Isn't that amazing? Now, if you're getting back that amount of money, well, it's easy to spend a little less than that and to buy all the politicians who vote on that. In fact, that's why they've kept the subsidies all along. But now they can go to the Democratic Party and say, hey, listen, I'm gonna give the maximum I can give to every national Republican candidate, and then to the parties, I'm gonna give an unlimited amount. Now, I could do that just for the Republicans, or I could do it for the Republicans and Democrats. Now, what would you like? The Democratic Party, I, I know what their answer has been, and I certainly now that there's even no limits left, certainly know what their answer is going to be in the future. 
we will do whatever you tell us to do, otherwise we have no chance of winning. ExxonMobil can do it, Chevron can do it, and every oil company can do it. The Koch brothers who are also involved in the oil business, they can do it on top. They could simply buy in mass all of our politicians. Before they had to do independent expenditures based on per campaign, etc. Now they can just walk into the Republican National uh, uh, Committee or to the Democratic National Committee and say, like, I will take hmm, all of you. Isn't that amazing? And this Supreme Court says not only is that not corruption, that it doesn't even arise to the level of the appearance of corruption, that no reasonable person would think that that. It gives the appearance of corruption. <laughs> no sane person would think the opposite. That one person or one corporation could walk in and buy the entire political party. That that doesn't give an appearance of corruption? On which planet? And of course the reality is our Supreme Court has itself been bought. Now, L Lewis Powell was a guy who wrote a memo back in 1971 said, hey, why don't uh, the sh why doesn't the Chamber of Commerce go ahead and buy every uh, function of society? We should go and uh, put a ton of money into education, into government. And he said, the Supreme Court is really important. Richard Nixon said, you're right, let me put you on the Supreme Court. He took the guy who wrote the memo for the Chamber of Commerce, talking about basically purchasing the Supreme Court, and he put him on the Supreme Court. And lo and behold, he's the one that was the deciding vote in Buckley v. Vallejo and in Bellotti, where they decided that corporations could spend uh, money in politics. Huh. What a wonderful coincidence. And since then, every Republican politician and sometimes Democratic politicians, presidents, get to appoint these Supreme Court justices and every time they say they are pro-business and proud. And this is what it has come to. The different ways that this will lead, lead to uh, corruption is untold. I mean, we're at the tip of the iceberg here. The Koch brothers are... Oh, they're warming up their hands. They can't wait to get into the buffet of these parties and just buy them all up at the same time. But think about this. Carlos Slim is the richest man in the world. He happens to be Mexican. He's not American, right? Could he buy an American corporation? Could he buy a majority share or enough shares in a corporation that he has controlling interest? Then that corporation, which is technically still considered American, could then give unlimited amount of money to our politicians and buy them. So let's say he buys, I don't know, an American corporation like Caterpillar. And then he has agricultural interests in Mexico. And he thinks, well, you're not going to vote against my interests. I'm going to get whatever trade agreement that I want. Well, I'll buy a controlling interest in Caterpillar. This is just one out of millions of examples that you could pick. And then Caterpillar will give an unlimited money, amount of money, buying both the Republican and Democratic Party. And then I will get to control your government. You don't even have to be American to do it. <laughs> now, our so-called democracy is gone, gone, gone. It's over, over. So the Supreme Court killed it. It's an open auction. So now uh, the very few rich people and the billionaires in the country will get to decide who among them will pick our president. Now, now, let me give you a sense of how small that community is, right? So 650 uh, donors contributed the maximum amount to candidates, PACs, and parties in the last election cycle. So now those guys will get to put in even more money, because now there is no maximum. So those 650 can basically run the country. Wh who's going to disagree with a guy who says, I w I'm going to give you millions upon millions of dollars that will decide so many of the elections across the country? Who's going to say no to that? <laughs> Not the Republicans and Democrats I know. By the way, uh, the Republicans were on the side uh, of uh, McCutcheon in this case, and they said, yes, please lift the caps so we can get bribed at more monumental levels. And the guy specifically involved was Mitch McConnell, the leader of the Republicans in the Senate. He was one of the parties in this case, saying, please allow for more legalized bribes. Now, continuing with the number of people that uh, give money to political campaigns. For people giving uh, $200, that's only 0.26% of Americans. So 99.74% of us are totally irrelevant now to national politicians. Not a little irrelevant, 
totally irrelevant. But $200 is a very small amount. So what is realistically the larger amounts that people give? Well, you can give the maximum of $2,600 to a candidate. Now, of course, because of the McCutcheon decision, you could multiply that by every candidate in the country, then give unlimited amounts to the parties, right? But that's 0.05% of Americans, and they decided elections before. <laughs> now uh, it, they have even more power and more voice. How about people giving $10,000 in campaign donations? That's a 0.01% of Americans and 100,000. That's 0.00024% uh, of Americans. And those are the guys who are now empowered because there is no cap left. Unlimited amount of money in politics. Okay, now, these guys will decide which policies we have going forward. Great! There's only one thing, though, that could change this. Because it's hard not to get despondent over this news, right? Because you can't write a law that would defeat this because the Supreme Court is above that. The Supreme Court says the law you wrote is unconstitutional because my friends over at ExxonMobil and you name the companies, so-called good companies, Google, whatever, I mean, they all have it. First of all, they all have a fiduciary responsibility to be amoral and to be profit maximizing machines to make every nickel they can. They have a fiduciary responsibility to avoid all of the taxes and shift that tax burden onto average Americans and not pay any of it themselves let alone the deregulation so they could pollute and save money, let alone uh, killing off their competition uh, by, for example, as the car companies are doing now, not allowing Tesla to go into different states and to sell directly because they just bought the politicians. They say, okay, no, 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 just ban them. The free market be damned. This is crony capitalism run amok. It's on steroids. So you can't even, even if you had the right legislators, which you, under this system, it's impossible to have at the national level, it doesn't matter because the Supreme Court says it's unconstitutional. My friends at all those corporations that I just named uh, are allowed to spend unlimited money buying all of your politicians, so your law is struck down. So what in the world can you do? There's only one thing above the Supreme Court. That's the Constitution of the United States of America. If you pass an amendment, then they do not have a choice. If it says in the amendment in different ways to get money out of politics, to say corporations are obviously not human beings, they don't have inalienable rights. They don't have the right to spend money on our politics. <laughs> they don't have corporate personhood. They can't spend money buying our politicians. In fact, no one can spend money buying our politicians anymore. They should represent us. We should do public financing of elections so that it's not an open auction, so that our politicians aren't bought at the market, so that they actually represent us. If you pass that in an amendment, well, then they don't have a choice. It is, in fact, the only way to save our government. And it's the only way not to keep our democracy because it's at this point gone. You're under an illusion if you think your vote matters. As Professor Larry Lessig from Harvard Law School says, there are two campaigns. There's the one where you vote, but there's the one before that, that's the money primary. They select the candidates based on how much money they have in the first place, how many ads they can run to eliminate their competition. You're, then you're not going to get the vote on anybody until they pass the money primary. And in order to pass the money primary, what do they have to do? They have to suck up to the richest, most powerful people and corporations in the country. So you're getting a false choice. The only choice you have is multinational corporate robot number one or multinational corporate robot number two. So you've got to get the money out, and the only way to do it is an amendment. But it can be done. Now, everybody's going to tell you it can't be done, but we've seen through our experience that it most certainly can be done. Because the only de place democracy still exists in the country, believe it or not, is at the state and local level. I talked to a representative in New Hampshire who's a state rep. Uh, he won his election on $300. He had $300 and he won. Uh, in Maine, they have public financing. A woman who works at a cash register, literally, at a grocery store, she works at a cash register, ran her campaign on $250 and became a state legislator, okay? And you know what those people are? They're honest, they care about their representatives. She sees all of her representatives at the grocery store, okay, at the people she represents, and she actually represents them. Those people can get money out of politics because you don't have to go through Congress. You can actually go to the state level, call for a convention specifically to get this amendment, and then have the three quarters of the states ratify 
And we don't save our democracy, because as I told you, it's gone. We reclaim our uh, democracy. We regain our democracy at the national level. If you and I uh, put our forces together, we can do it. But if they split us up and they get us thinking pessimistically and they get us despondent, well, then they win. If the, every day that you sit on your couch at home, they win. When we get together, we can accomplish anything. Women got a right to vote when they couldn't vote in the first place. I guarantee you every person told those women in the suffragist movement, you're crazy. How can you possibly get the right to vote when you can't vote? It's impossible. But they did it. In fact, every generation of Americans has passed an amendment to the Constitution, except one, that's us. You got to get up. You cannot uh, feel sorry for yourself after a decision like this. You have to get energized. You have to get up. And it's time to ride. Now, we already set up a group to do this, because we knew this was coming. It's called Wolf Pack. You join that Wolf Pack, and together, we can finally tell the Supreme Court, the powers in Washington, and all these people, we've had enough. You're not coming for us anymore. We're coming for you. We can do it. We've already done it at the state level, had uh, our resolution introduced in over 10 states, passing uh, in houses in Vermont, in California, and more is piling up as we speak. You gotta get up and act. You gotta do it right now. If ever there was a moment to join Wolfpack, this is it. Wolf-pack.com. Any way you can, at a bare minimum, sign the petition, let them know you're here. But become a volunteer, become a member, help us fight back. Otherwise, that's it. The dream of the founding fathers is dead today.